Hi everyone, this is Leah Klein, health and wholeness coach. And today my question for you is, are you meditating on God's law day and night? Our verse is verses, more accurately is Joshua 1, 8 and 9. We regularly have verse 9, but we frequently don't talk about verse 8 as well. So we're going to do that today. So our verse is say, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened Do not and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So back to the question I was asking, are you meditating on God's law day and night? What does that look like? Um, I've talked in the past about taking a verse and reading it over and over again and emphasizing a new word each time and kind of, you know, going through it. And that is one of the ways, you know, that you can do a scripture at meditation and just go over and over something uh, until it, you know, sinks down in uh, and you get a deeper meaning for you as far as what's what it's actually saying beyond just what the surface is um, because we get the surface from just reading it but after if it's something that we need to have go from here down to our heart then it's going to take a little more than just reading it once to get it there Another part of this is it's specifically talking about God's law. It's not necessarily talking about the old, whole Old Testament, though I think it could apply. Uh, generally, that is referring to the Pentateuch, the first five books of uh, the Old Testament, when you say God's law. Now, part of Part of what he is saying here is actually that there is benefit in following God's way of doing things. And that can look a number of different ways. It can look like what you eat, uh, which we regularly talk about here. It can look like how you use your money. Do you tithe? Do you give regularly? Um, there's many, many aspects of what to do and how to do things. And I know it's easy to get stuck in uh, the sacrifices and have trouble reading, you know, that part of it. Uh, it's something we have to think about more of why is why was this important? Why was this necessary? Why is it no longer necessary? And you know, think about what you're reading if you're you know reading some of those harder you know harder passages to um, absorb <laughs> and to get the benefit from, but it's ultimately you're wanting it to be a part of who you are and act on it so you want god's word to so permeate you that your response will be that it will just come out it, you know a a quote will probably come out that you may or may not know the reference for uh, but you will know that it's in the scripture. Hopefully you'll know generally where it is, <laughs> like the book of the Bible, maybe, uh, maybe even a chapter, uh, if you don't remember the verse, but 
that comes from repetition. That comes from spending time reading God's word and you do not get it in any other way. Uh, it's prolonged, repeated exposure that makes that possible. And it also changes the way you act. It changes what you do. And also this, you know, we're starting to talk about prospering uh, and prosper as a lead up to an event coming up. And that doesn't just mean money. Part of it is money. Part of it's financial. God taking care of you uh, is part of prosper, but it's also a deeper level of, you know, kind of well-being and, you know, the other way of putting it was good success that it uses in the verse. It's like, okay, well, good success depends on what your goal is. Uh, your goal can be money. It can be something else. It can be better relationships. It can be you know, a variety of things, better health, you know, all those things, if you achieve them or make progress in those areas, it's considered a success. And so it's not just saying, okay, I just won the lotto and I got a million bucks. Yeah, it's, that's not, <laughs> that's not necessarily just what it's saying. Do you have the money to pay your bills? Yes, well, that that is a success. That is God's provision. And sometimes it looks more like that. Sometimes it looks different than that and can be then used if you are blessed with more than you need, then it's a chance for you to bless others and use that in ways that God would have you use it, including you know your church, including tithing. And so that's a little bit on that. There, there's repeatedly through the Old Testament that when you follow God's way of doing things, that is rewarded. If you also are in God's will, that is rewarded. So admittedly, if you're going the complete opposite direction of God's will, you're not going to get success. It just, it won't happen. <laughs> so, so there does have to be a congruence. You're, you're on the same team with God, then God is, and you're doing what he has for you to do, then he is going to take care of you and bless you in doing that. And so that's one of the benefits and reasons for spending time uh, in the word in you know the law you know in you know the old testament as well as the new and the second part second action uh it's talking about you know doing something otherwise you know what is success if you did absolutely nothing i mean obviously you've taken some kind of action in there that's implied but your second action that it mentions is being strong and courageous. That is actually a continuation of our previous verse. Usually we have that verse by itself, which is an awesome verse, but it has some context to it. And it's saying you do this and God wants us to be strong and courageous in doing what he wants us to do. And why can we be strong and courageous? Because God is with us. That is the most important thing of the two verses is that God is with you. And that is what I want to leave you with. Um, also, I want to encourage you and ask God to show you what you're needing to meditate on. Uh, maybe there's a particular area of scripture that God's going to lay on your heart to, you know, dwell a little more in and think about more. Uh, you can always start, you know, in the Psalms or Proverbs, you know, that are a little easier sometimes to do uh, and work your way up to maybe something else. But see what God prompts. He will direct you to scripture that's relevant to where you're at right now. 
I have seen it so many times uh, that I know, I know that that will happen. And of course, to connect with God on a deeper, more meaningful level and to really connect in a way that just cannot be described, I do encourage going on a personal retreat that's one on one with time with God in his creation away from the distractions, the noise of your everyday life. And also the prosper event is coming and so I wanted to tell you save the date, I will post in uh, the group when we have are ready to start uh, having people sign up for tickets. Uh, early bird tickets will be starting very soon here. And it's on September 29th. You wanted details, right? <laughs> the, the event is September 29th, and it's a one day. It's online. You don't have to go anywhere, anything else. That is actually going to be completely doable from your computer. So uh, set that date aside, and then uh, as soon as we are ready to start accepting uh, enrollment uh, for tickets, uh, we will have a link posted in the group. And I will post uh, under the video when that's also available as well. Uh, so check a later video if this one doesn't have it posted on there. And I want to wrap up our time with a song. Feel free to sing along. Uh, many of you should probably know this one. This one's been around a while. Uh, we're going to do How Firm a Foundation, verse 1 and 2. And it's, it's a personal favorite. Um, I'm doing those two verses because they're the most relevant to our conversation that we're having today. And if you don't know it, feel free to just listen. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in God's excellent word. What more can be said than to you God hath said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God, and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand, upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. And I will see you next week with another verse with it.